Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hao Li. Uh, I'm a computer science professor at USC. And I'm also CEO of a startup called Pinscreen. And um, I work at the intersection between computer graphics and computer vision. And um, my goal is to make human digitization accessible to anyone. So since the beginning of uh, computer graphics, scientists and engineers have built computational tools and algorithmic um, solutions uh, to help digital artists recreate anything that they can actually imagine, right? So um, virtual worlds, anything that we can imagine in our fantasies. So the whole idea here is, can we actually teleport ourselves inside a virtual space, something where you can sense and um, experience anything visually as if we were actually there, right? Something similar to the matrix. And if we were in that space, um, how cool would it actually, actually be if we could actually take the appearance of anyone and enable true uh, telepresence, right? So unfortunately, these type of effects, shape-shifting effects, are only visible in Hollywood movies. And one reason for that is that it takes a lot of time to actually produce this type of content, right? A lot of digital artists have to work on it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but we're not too far away from that, right? So the whole idea is, um, with the de democratization of virtual reality, right? So we have basically a way to produce low-cost, high-quality um, display technologies in order to build these VR um, goggles. And the other thing is, with a dramatic increase of GPU performance, we can recreate high-quality digital content in real time, right? As you can see right here. So if we combine these two things, we really have the possibility to recreate a virtual world, and virtual reality can be used as a next platform for media consumption. Hopefully, we don't have to end up like this, right? So, um, you know, the whole idea is, can we actually go beyond, you know, playing games all days or watching 360 videos? Can we actually use virtual reality as a new medium, as a new platform to enable communication, right? Remote communication where people in different places on Earth can actually com communicate and interact with each other. So this is where we're at today. So here's a demonstration from Oculus, and the whole idea is you have like two participants that are interacting with each other. Um, they're playing with each other. And um, the main problem that you can see right here is that people have to wear these bulky HMD devices in order to be immersed in that virtual space. And then the second problem is, obviously, everyone just appears as a faceless floating head. <laughs> right? So the key to true intimate face-to-face -face communication here is really twofold, right? So we have to solve two problems. The first one is, even while we're wearing these uh, VR HMDs, we want to be able to track our faces. The second problem is, how can we actually digitize our appearances inside that virtual world, right? So we want to be able to clone our faces, et cetera, right? build our own avatar. Let's start with faces, right? So as we all know, uh, in the visual effects industry, facial performance capture is an established technology uh, to bring digital characters to life. And in 2014, um, my team and I went to Weta Digital in New Zealand, and we worked on a really interesting project, right? So the whole idea was, can we actually reenact uh, Paul Walker, the unfortunately deceased Paul Walker, for the movie Furious 7, and recreate a digital replica of his face? And then the problem is, this entire process is associated with a huge amount, a really demanding task of digital artists and production. Now, just to give you an idea, um, it can take, easily take up to like um, three weeks for 10 seconds of animation, right? So more recently, um, there have been a lot of advances in facial performance capture technology, and right now it's possible to do all these things in real time. So here's a demonstration. Um, that has been re recently shown by Ninja Theory in Epic Games, where they're basically capturing the performance, the facial performance, and also the entire body um, of an actor, and map this directly into a real-time game engine. As a matter of fact, all of you have a facial tracking, real-time facial tracking solution in your pocket, right? So all you need to do is take out your iPhones, download Snapchat, and uh, enable the Snapchat lenses effects, and you basically can't put any digital mask on your face, right? Do all these like crazy things. But if that's the way we digitize our faces, how can we possibly capture our faces if we have to wear these huge goggles in front of us, right? So the next problem is that all these algorithms that are out there, right? They're designed to, you know, they're assuming that your entire face is visible. 
So you need to be able to see all your eyes, your nose, and your uh, mouth in order to um, track your face. So what happens is that if you simply just put your hand in front of your face, um, the mask will easily drop off, right? So this is what's going to happen. So to approach this problem, what we did is we introduced a method that uses a technique called facial segmentation. So we're using the latest state-of-the-art deep learning uh, methods. Uh, it's a special branch in artificial intelligence. And what we do right here is we're training a neural network with massive amounts of training data, basically a lot of faces that we collected from the internet. And what we can do right now is using this um, facial segmentation algorithm, we can automatically tell what, uh, what region in the image is the face and what isn't, right? So you can actually put your hand in front of your face and it can, take, it can tell, it can distinguish at every pixel if that is your face or not, right? So one immediate thing you can do with this is that you can um, do a proper, visually proper face swapping of your face, um, as you can see in this demonstration. So this is a live demonstration, live recording from our labs. Uh, here's my student, and what he's going to do next, he's going to turn himself into Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and the, nice, the difference here is he can put things in front of his face, uh, and everything is properly rendered, right? And within the context of virtual reality, what you can do right now is the following, right? So you can use this occlusion handling technology in order to track your mouth while you're wearing this huge thing. Well, how do we capture what's inside the face? Right? So in collaboration with Oculus, uh, we, present, we presented last year the first um, facial performance sensing HMD. Uh, basically, the idea is we put a 3D camera in front of your face. And what we can do is we can record all the mouth activities as well as anything that's happening inside the eyes. So what we're doing here is we are attaching contact sensors on the foam pad that is on the HMD. And by measuring how the skin deforms while you are immersed in this virtual space, we can um, you know, measure certain facial activities and use these signal patterns to map them onto a digital avatar of the subject. So this is my student here um, who is um, doing some interesting facial performances. <laughs> and you know, anyone who would be at that virtual space could see himself um, you know, appear as he is. So I agree with you, you know, so the form factor doesn't look very appealing. I don't think anyone's going to buy this. So that's why we're actually working on the next solution, right? So the next iteration of the form factor is we're going to use a HMD, VR HMD device from Fove. And what we're doing is we're integrating uh, IR cameras inside the lenses and also attaching uh, basically a $10 PlayStation camera in front of your mouth. And what we can do is we can capture high-quality facial animations. This is how the system looks like from the outside. And for the first time, we can also recreate in real time production level animation, uh, such as those that you have seen like in Pixar or Disney animation. And the secret behind this is that we're using a deep neural network that, can, that is trained from massive amounts of data that are being uh, Pretty generated soon by we'll digital all be artists. Living in a science fiction movie, but hopefully not one of the scary ones. What do you mean that you can't make it? That wasn't part of the plan. All right, so now you get an idea on how we can actually capture facial performances inside a virtual space. And then the next question is, how can we recreate our digital avatars? How can we make this thing automatic and deployable? All right, so the traditional approach of achieving this is you would take you know, a couple of reference images of a person, right? So you would basically, um, maybe a single image or a couple of more shots of a subject that you want to recreate, for example, Tyrion. And um, what you do is you give this data to a really highly skilled digital artist, and after a few days, he will magically recreate um, a digital character fully rigged that you can use to animate, right? So it's a functional three-dimensional model. So this is you know, something that's really associated with a lot of skills and time, but what we really like to do is to make this entire process automatic. We'd like to use as little as just a single image and recreate this digital avatar, right? So we throw this image into an AI system and it produces this. Now instead of like explaining how this whole thing works, I'm just going to show you um, on a live demonstration. So hopefully that works. Let me try this out. All right. 
seems like it's working. So what I did this morning was um, I went to the internet. I heard like the next speaker is John Favreau. So I thought about maybe we don't need him to come over, right? So um, <laughs> I just went on the, on the internet and typed in Google Images John Favreau. So I took his picture, and I'm just going to digital reconstruct him. So I am John Favreau. <laughs> so I'm going to compute his 3D model right now. All right, there you go. <laughs> right? 3D character of John. Maybe I should just, you know, <laughs> take another 80 minutes. Uh, oh, he's here. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, uh, can we switch back to the slides? I, I mean... <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, the character still looks a little bit uncanny, and one reason for this is that the hair you know, is represented by a 3D surface. And one thing that we are researching at the moment is how to recreate realistic hair strands from a single image. Right, so let me show you how this works. So as we can all imagine, hair is something that's you know, incredibly difficult to digitize. Right? So it's volumetric, it has a lot of occlusions, and you know, all these different crazy strands, structures, that's really difficult to capture. So in the last few years, what we've done is we have come up with a couple of important breakthroughs in, um, in computer graphics. One thing is we've developed some techniques to analyze the appearance, so analyzing the structures of how hair are being formed in the image. Uh, we've introduced new uh, computational models as priors for the 3D reconstruction based on the geometry as well as based on the physics of how hair are being created. So if we combine all that, we can recreate high-quality um, three-dimensional hair structures just from a single image. Right? So this is a simple image, something we've downloaded from the internet, completely unconstrained, and we can infer the entire hair structure just from that single image. And if you believe it or not, uh, what we can also do is we can reconstruct um, highly constrained hairstyles, such as braided ones and ponytails. Right? So this entire model is being recon reconstructed fully automatically without the help of digital artists. All right. So you've seen a couple of um, you know, interesting applications in entertainment, gaming, you know, social media. And the, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to advance the technology to a point where anyone can create these type of high quality content you know, automatically. So what we actually need is you know, some form of interface where a person can use some text descriptions, use voice, or some reference images, and you know, simply act in front of a video camera and create these type of contents. And now if we take a step back, what it actually means is that we, can, we are basically teaching a camera how to perceive a human like we do. Right? So if we have the capability of digitizing a hum an entire human body just from a single image, what it means is that the camera could potentially understand what we're actually doing, what our behaviors are, what our emotions are, so that might be the future of how we interact with our cell phones. Right? And with this type of visual recognition system, what you can also do is you know, have self-driving cars um, identify or predict what pedestrians will be doing. So as a final remark, one final question that I'd like to leave with you uh, today is what kind of weird reality would we actually live if we can't even tell what is real? Right? In a couple of years, we'll have visual effects uh, digital contents that don't require an entire costly visual effects pipeline to be generated, right? And so what it means is that these type of technologies will be accessible to anyone, and you know, anyone could run around with a fake identity. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.